Oppo everyone. I'm Leon Chang, and I'm from Oppo, and I also a maintainer of Kubernetes community. It's a great honor for me to once again participate in KubeCon North American conference. Today, I will be talking about version learning best practice based on Kubernetes storage. First, back look. Let's look at the version history of Kubernetes. On this page, we can see that Kubernetes had gone through several key milestones. In 2019, we joined the sandbox. In early 2022, we released version 3, which introduced support for a usual coding subsystem. In the middle of 2022, we successfully became a SynSaf incubating project. In 2023, throughout this year, we have released several versions. This includes the refactoring on of a usual coding subsystem, support for auditing and improvements of stability. In our recent release, we added support for automatic POSIX interface, space quota management. The upcoming version will include features such as snapshots, automated disk migration, lifecycle management, and recycle bin. This is the ecosystem of KubeFS. KubeFS covers various domains. As shown in the diagram on the left, we support storage services for databases like MySQL, Elasticsearch, and Clayhouse, which are focused on computation. We also provide support for traditional big data technologies, <coughs> such as HDFS, HBase, and Spark. Additionally, we have associate components like Prometheus and Kubernetes ecosystem. On the right side, we have uh, uh, the overview of community and its operations. Currently, our community contributors include Oppo, Bigo, Xiaomi, Jingdu, and many others. <coughs> In terms of architecture, Kubernetes has also introduced at the last year co conference. Kubernetes is a system which with scalable protocol interoperability. As you can see from the picture, the three components, ADFS, POSIX, and 3, are connected. Then the three protocols can be accessed by each other. The data written by S3 will be requested to the object node in the picture, but it can be read through the POSIX interface in the picture. We support the story engine in addition to multi-copy multi engine and the usual coding engine. Both systems are horizontally scalable, and our magic node can also be horizontally scalable. Sharding is performed within the date and metadata node. In the sharding dimension, we will form a replica group to maintain strong availability. At the same time, QFS is a high-performance system. Our meta system supports a full memory multi organization based on B3. As will be mentioned later, we will create a multiple level cache system, especially on the client side. We have made a lot of optimizations, include a graphic direct storage, which, which will be discussed later. We are also making adjustments in terms of architecture, which we will be able to discuss in the hybrid cloud later. What you see in the diagram in our original coding subsystem. The original coding subsystem is an independent system. In the diagram, you can see that we have the access layer, medit management system, automatic health check and repair system, and the storage pool. In the original data section, we use route for the a three replica consensus in terms of cross zone deployment. We specifically support deployments across one to three available zones. Different configurations of data blocks and parity blocks can be used. And we also support local parity blocks within each zone, enabling fast repairs. Additionally, we have implement special handling for small files to reduce system fan out and improve 
performance by trading space for time. This topic is the best practice for AI, and the workflow of large-scale modules can be divided into three stages. First stage is data storage processing. Second is uh, module development and training. The third is the module uh, archiving and online inference. Let's talk about the first stage. In this stage, the storage requirements are scalability and efficiency. Large scale modules really are massive amount of data that may be distributed across different data centers, clouds, applications, or systems. Collecting this data is a prerequisite for training large modules to efficiently collect data. A high capacity and scalable storage platform is needed. Additionally, the platform should support various method for fast data collection and data import from different sources. Furthermore, the processing tasks such as cleaning, labeling, the duplication, and the augmentation should allow the sharding and the interoperability of the same data set across different data processing platforms. The second is mo module de development and training. In this stage, the the storage requirement is to fully utilize the graphic per process unit without waiting. Large modules have high training cost and require significant computational power. Due to the enormous number of the parameters in large modules, training often involves parallel computing on thousands of graphic process units of several months. For several months, so the parallel I/O capabilities and the stability of the storage directly impact the cost of the training large modules. The third stage is module archiving and online inference. In this stage, the storage requirement is fast distribution in second. When the module passed the archiving validation, it needed it needs to quickly deploy it to online inference service to generate business value. The entire update process requests, requests fast and synchronized distribution, ensuring that all inference nodes and nodes complete module update at, at the same time. This avoids inconsistency among interface nodes that could affect the inference performance and the user experience. Arcing second level synchronization requires storage with high concurrency and through output capabilities. The entire process in Wu. Let, now let's look at the characteristic of the large secure module workflows. The entire process involves repeatedly reading the same batch of data sites and performing multiple iterations of computations. It has a falling IO characteristics. Repeatedly reading the same batch of data site. Each epoch reads every data point from the same data site, and it is read only once. The data read by the same graphic process unit node in each epoch is random. Random shuffling is applied to data set is to prevent module overfitting. The range of data processed by a graphic process unit is in two epochs. Epochs is randomly selected. Regular writing of checkpoints during the training process is all is also important. Checkpoints are written periodically to allow the resuming training from the concurrent report in case of interruptions. The checkpoint writing process blocks the training. Considering <coughs> considering the I/O characteristic of the training with large models, using a large scale distribution data catch between the computation. Computing nodes and the data center can significantly improve training parallel I/O throughput. It also helps alleviate I/O pressure on remote storage and enhance the overall system stability. Now let's look at the challenges of large-scale module workflows. The first challenge is high capacity and efficient data. Interoperability. The workflow of large modules rely on the rapid collection of massive amounts of data, multiple channels, governance, 
the ability to share and exchange data at different stages, and the requirements of the store for storage to support large scale state while unifying storage for data with different life cycles and wholeness. The second challenge is training acceleration capability. Matching powerful graphic process unit computing power to eliminate graphic process unit idle times to push the parallel I.O. capability of storage to the test. Sufficiently stable storage, fast checkpoint saving, and quick recovery of the interruption are crucial to avoid blocking training while interruption occur. Robust storage performance and stability are key to reducing the training cost of large modules. The third challenge is, is the accelerating checkpoint writing capability. Efficient checkpoint writing is important for sim modules process due training. The ability to quickly write in checkpoints while training ongoing is crucial for minimizing any disruptions or delays. The fourth challenge is, is Rapid online deployment capability. The efficiency of module updates directly impact business benefits. The fast, frequent, and consistent distribution of gigabytes level module online environment requires high demands on storage, current, concurrent I.O. throughout output, and stream, streamlined process. The ability to distribute the modules quickly and can Consistently is essential for successful online deployment. So let's look at the data interoperability. Throughout the entire workflow, large single modules data flow through different stages from the processing to module packaging and the distribution. How can data efficiently flow for between different platforms? The key line in storage that supports multiple product access, allowing this sharding among different access methods while strongly only a single copy of data. And the second challenge is, is the acceleration. Now we build on a three layer, three, three level catch. The first level catch is the compute computation. Computing side catch uses local idle memory and disk resources of the computing mode and deploy acceleration service and catch the recently accessed date of the business. The first level catch includes two parts memory based method and disk memory based data catch. The method catch is also include anode catch and the dentry catch, which can significantly reduce the method query. Daily when few read files in lookup and open. The data catch mainly catches file data blocks. The first level cache has good performance and is limited by local node storage capacity. It can realize the local cache acceleration tens of millions of metadata and terabytes of data. In terms of catch eviction strategies, the traditional LRU algorithm is not suitable for large-scale modules, unlike a random hotspot or access some previous business scenarios. Data reading in large-scale module training follows a regular pattern. The entire data set is read once before accessing to next round. When the catch space is insufficient, LRU product has evicting earlier access time, access the date. Due to the massive size of the data in large modules, if the catch space is smaller, then the size of training data size catch breakdown can occur. This means that in the later half of the epoch, epoch the data catched in the first half of may be evicted, while this data is precisely what the subsequent iterations will need. The cycle leads to no catch hits in the later stages, thoroughly impacting the effectiveness of the catch acceleration of the large modules and even causing negative effects. To address this reading characteristic of large modules, Cubify's provides two catch strategies. So another strategy strategies is time to live catching. ETL is based on its preparation time for data eviction, maximizing 
the catch of the date in the acceleration rate layer. Date remains in the catch until it reaches the TTL, in, 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 ensuring catch gets across multiple iterations. These two strategies can be configured appropriately based on the actual scenarios and basic needs. That, so now let's we are know we have known that the first level has its shortage. So we developed the level two catch. The level two catch is an independent distributed catch system designed to be deployed on the business side, particularly in public cloud environment. From the diagram, sorry, from the diagram, we can see it supports hybrid deployment with multiple environment. Files are divided into one metabyte chunks and hashed into a slot array based on consistent hashing. The slot are zinned to flash groups, which can have one or multiple replicas, enabling deployment across multiple available zones. Additionally, the clean side contrasts its own slot routing based on latency. Or Achieving proximity, proximity based exercise. The level two cache can be deployed in two ways: disk based or memory based. It also, it can be distributed on the application side or deployed independently, leveraging the client cache capabilities and addressing the limitations and the scalability issues of the. For the L1 catch, level one catch, compared to level one catch, uh, accessing uh, the level two catch requires network communication. However, it offers a large capacity, higher through output, and can uh, dynamically scale in and out. The level two catch is particularly suitable for accelerating data in large scale module training scenarios, ranging from hundreds of terabits to Database. The level three catch. The level two catch is effectively utilizing clean side resources, but these resources may be limited in the background system that uses error coding cost a lot a low, but performance may be bottlenecked. In the such cases, there is a need for the acceleration system with a certain storage capacity. That is also suitable for future architecture evolution. Therefore, the modified replica system is equipped with caching functionality, which will be further upgraded in the hybrid cloud scenario discussed later. Additionally, the L3 cache supports a large capacity preheating feature, allowing it to be preloaded in the once. To meet the acceleration requirements of the business, the all the all all layout of the three level catch is shown in the diagram. Level one and level two are suitable for catching support for public cloud, while level three is ideal as an acceleration catch for extra cold cloud storage system. Each level also supports regional affinity for catching. By leveraging the three level in combination, the requirements for large scale module training in scenarios such as from public cloud to private cloud can be addressed effectively. The combination, the combination of the two level catch acceleration and data perfection solution can significantly improve data per Data process performance, reading through output bandwidth of hundreds of gigabytes to terabytes per, per, per second for training framework. This means the IO bandwidth requirements for parallel training of large modules with thousands of graphic process units. Moreover, the design of level one catch and the level two catch allows for modularity. Enabling business to deploy them as needed to meet the requirement of business scenarios. For language modules, 
with data sizes in range of several terabytes requiring small byte level have raised with strict latency requirements. Level 1 cache is suitable. On the other hand, on the other hand, for MAG or image modules that typically have larger data volumes and limited local storage space on computational nodes, caching data in the level 2 cache based on high performance SSD would have would be more appropriate. To address the aforementioned cache acceleration, we all we have also started investing in hardware level performance exploration. KubeFS utilized the graphic process unit direct storage technology, which enables the direct Association of GPUs memory with Kubeflow's remote storage storage use using direct memory access. This allowed data transfer between the GPU and the QBFS bypass the the, the centralized the, the central process unit, accelerating the data transfer process. This direct transfer mentioned reduced reduced the wait time to process the I/O from the Plan side to the storage side. By leveraging the graphic, by leveraging the graphic direct storage, the GPU can directly read and write data from the storage device generated by machine learning. This saves time and bandwidth while providing higher data throughput. The above is some of the work we have done in field of AI. In addition. In addition, we, there are ongoing architecture adjustments for KubeFS. With hybrid cloud storage being a key focus for our future work, let me provide a brief introduction on the aspect. Uh, on the aspect. Hybrid, hybrid cloud storage refers to combination of and the integration of on-premise storage infrastru infrastructure with cloud-based storage services. It aims to Leverages, leverage the benefits of both environments, allowing organizations to store and manage data across multiple locations, including their own data centers and public cloud platform. The hybrid cloud business, the hybrid cloud business represents a leap for QBFS in terms of data storage. Initially, we consider hybrid cloud storage to address the cost of issues of KubeFS, aiming to achieve cost control through data theory. However, we discovered that the leveraging the lifecycle concept based on S3 storage enables better data mobility data can occur within a pre cloud cloud within availability zones across zones, and even between public and private, private cloud. Furthermore, data mobility can span different storage systems, covering various back-end systems within a unified namespace, metadata management acceleration system, and a flexible support for different storage subsystems. We can effectively, effectively meet the diverse data storage needs of different business scenarios. A unified namespace enables directives to correspond to different storage systems, providing greater convenience in meeting various business requirements. As seen in the diagram, the clean side mounting point corresponds to object storage, ADFI storage, and regular POSIX interface based on internal storage. To achieve this capability, the clean side needs to interface with different background back-end capabilities. The lab cycle is crucial for the overall data flow. For volume level operations, it is important to associate volume data in lab cycle with lab cycle policies and resource strategies. The foundation of lab cycle is resource management by the master node and the scaling of migration tasks. Regarding the main node, 
which handles metadata it needs to support metadata changes during the data migration without affecting regular data reading. On the other hand, workers nodes can focus on their own migration task, making the process simpler for them. The unified cache acceleration the unified cache acceleration ensures timely acceleration of data from different background storage system. Aligning with the concept of replica cache mentioned earlier, this approach enables one type of data to be stored in multiple storage. However, it is important to consider the impact of migration on the catch, as well, as well as the impact on data consistency when users make modifications on the date. The aforementioned concept uh, and, the contact, uh, and the content, including hybrid cloud storage and some catching acceleration features, is still being uh, on development and also need to be enhanced. Some of these features still uh, will, be will be released in the future, and some is already on the open source the branches. Thank you all. My speech ends here today. Welcome everyone to visit our website, join the community. Thank you.